back for a job, but it's a lockdown job. Um, of all the things that can stop a business operating, some little tiny bearings. But, uh, today we're going to be looking at a mate's laser cutter, um, and uh, he can't finish business or do a lot of what he needs to do without this laser cutter running. Um, and a couple of the main carriage bearings have dropped off, and I can show you a photo of that in here. And um, yeah, so the uh, basically one of these little MR ten six double Z bearings. They're ten mil outer, six mil inner, three mil thick, and they're shielded, hence the double Z. Um, one of them disintegrated, and so we're going to replace all of them, which is about six, and we've got a few spares. So uh, I'm not sure how the filming's going to go with this. Um, but yeah, might not be able to narrate it the way I normally do, but we'll uh, we'll go through the work, see if we can get it happening. Anyway, let's uh, get on the road and All get right, down. Alright, we're looking at this machine, which was second hand about nine years ago. And I've taken the main carriage off it, because one of the problems we had was some major backlash in the bearings. And uh, when we pulled one of the rollers out of this main carriage, the uh, race completely fell out and all the ball bearings just rolled away. We ordered some new bearings, but they're 10 mil and not 9 mil like the other ones. We're going to remanufacture this, but we have a new carriage coming in a couple of hours. So yeah, I'm just going to dismantle all this, get all the pieces right, and we will remanufacture these rollers to use a, um, a standard size bearing, so that in the future, if they have this problem, they can swap it over and uh, use a, a cheaper bearing. The other little thing when you're cutting acrylic in a laser, um, it does create significant build-up, so air assist is definitely useful on the lenses. And the primary mirrors, you do need to keep them clean, but uh, if you're doing metallic stuff, it will reflect back on this mirror and put little gouges out of it. Um, and your collimators it will tend to suffer as a result of that too, so doing the highly reflective stuff is not great. You can see a little mark on the edge of that mirror there, and these ones have got a bit of residue on them anyway. So. We'll give everything a clean up and we'll uh, try and remanufacture this. Now while I'm waiting for bits to arrive, one of the main things that uh, you want to pay attention to here is how these tensioners work. These springs pull this roller backwards and forwards to create tension. Once you've got the correct tension, then you can tighten up these lock screws. Um, if you leave them loose, yes, it will hold the tension and compensate for stretch, but it will also get uneven results. So definitely lock those guys down. There's also a mirror here, do not touch these screws, you will mess up the alignment and the laser. But there is an open access to that mirror there that you can clean very gently if you are brave. Um, this little guy here is the red dot laser that tells you where things are. This is the air cooled 40 watt laser module. Um, and you need to keep all these fins clean as well as these fans and everything in there. But yes, you do occasionally get dust in these units. This one has, if we can see over here, a uh, covering mirror here that keeps the dust out of that chamber which is very good some of them don't have that all right so while we're waiting for the new part to arrive which is going to take a couple of hours um, owner of this lasers had to go and drive and get the carriage we're going to dewater the air compressor this does a lot of work it's a little two-cylinder compressor very handy a three horsepower job but uh, it does fill up with a lot of atmospheric moisture so um I'm noticing the water trap downstairs is filling up a lot. So we're going to try and get in under here and open the drain valve and drain the water out of the tank. The other thing we're going to do is compressors do get through oil regularly. So we're going to check oil level in here. Having air assist on these lasers is very critical to a good clean job and maintaining the laser as well. All right. So let's lift this up a bit. Yeah, the drain valve is just underneath here somewhere. See if I can open this with my hand. It's actually just a little wing nut, which is nice. There should be a little bit of air in this. There we go. Yep, so there's a bit of oil and a bit of water coming out, but not too much. And just let this run out. You can see this is the sort of stuff that's coming out of it. So I'm going to try and lift up the back of the compressor and get all the water out. Alright, now there's one thing I'm going to do in a minute. But before I do that, you can probably hear this. There's a bit of air coming out of here. I need to tighten up the fittings. And that'll mean that the compressor runs less often. But this line is at a great deal of tension and it doubles back around there. So we need to try and 
attend to that as well. Let's see what we can do with this. All right, so I've shunted the compressor forward a bit, which has taken some of the tension off that hose. So we're gonna try and tighten up this hose clamp a little bit. Good old Leatherman to the rescue. That will reduce the number of cycles that this compressor does, which means it'll get less water in it because it's pumping less air in. And uh, it's sort of open vented windows up here, so it does get kind of humid up here, especially during winter. Now, what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna crack this vent just a tiny bit, just so it drips just a tiny bit, just the tiniest little bit, so that over time when it's been shut down at the end of the night, the residual pressure in here will cause the moisture to drip out, so it will sort of continually dewater itself. Um, this, I think, probably needs to be dewatered too. I'm gonna to guess that's what's gotta happen there. Yeah, see, there's a whole bunch of water in that as well. And that's not sitting upright, which means that's not actually doing its job properly, which is probably where a lot of the water is coming down the line. Um, and this hose is a bit short to put it back in the bracket where it should be, so I might actually see if he wants to hit this up for a bit of extra air line at some point. And we've got some more leaks in the fittings down here too. Yeah, so this one, this is a crimp fitting, and that's a bit leaky as well. So we'll see what we can do with that, and hopefully we'll be good. And uh, yeah, so we're pretty well done with the compressor for now. We've done all we can really do, but we have reduced a couple of leaks. It's mostly just this guy down here. So uh, it's reduced a little bit, but it's better than nothing. Now, um, all right, we're gonna head back down and see if we've got a new carriage. All right, so instead of a new carriage, we've got new rollers, but that will work just fine. Right, well, we've got new rollers have showed up, so uh, we're gonna get into the um, cleaner here. We're gonna give this a good hose off and a dry off in some hot water, and uh, then we'll put the new rollers on it. Gonna give these an initial clean here as well, then soak in the warm, soapy water as well. You gotta be careful about scrubbing these. You can actually scrub the coating off them, um, so yeah. Try not to handle them too much, but... All right, so what we're gonna do here, and I can't do this one-handed, um, we're gonna get into the brush here and give this a good scrub now that it's been soaked with a bit of detergent. Try and get that clean. And uh, yeah, we'll rinse our lenses and stuff. Hopefully this will be looking like new when we're done.
wonky verticals. I'm going to run a test run on the same piece and uh, see what she looks like. Get that in here and try and get it side by side. Hopefully we'll fix our problems. So we're back at the workbench. Um, editing is going to be interesting. There's been a lot of conversations going on in the background. So if the audio on this video is a bit funny, that's why. Now, um, I'm really tired. Um, one of the problems with MS is I'm not really up to normal uh, working hours. And today was an early start, but really only because this mate of mine was uh, really desperate to get going. Um, and like his business was suffering. So couldn't really ignore that one. Now, the bearings that came with these were 9mm bearings, and the ones we have are 10mm bearings, so I'm going to run a little bit of a machine in there, and this stud is of a different size, so we might re-engineer the studs and we might use a nylock nut on the top and a washer to hold the bearings in instead. It'll be interesting to see how we do this. Um, that or I can get the correct bearings, but they're insanely more expensive than these guys, so uh, we're going to try and make these work as a spare set, um, although given those bearings in there lasted nine years before they failed, um, it could be a while before they need them. And uh, also given that uh, well, it was having problems for the last few years and we really never narrowed it down to being the bearings, so it could be they wear out a bit quicker. Anyway, this will be an interesting other half to this video, and uh, we might work on that probably at a later date, so we'll call that a part two video. Um, but for now, um, I really need sleep, um, and I've got a whole bunch of tools over here to put back in the correct place, and my desk looks like a bomb has hit it. My apprentice has been in here. So, um, yeah, we're going to call it quits. I hope it was an interesting video. Um, it's going to be fun editing this, but it's something to do during lockdown. Um, and this was, of course, an exception to the lockdown rules, because you couldn't do this repair from home. Um, so yeah, it's fixed, it's done, um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to a few days of sleep-ins now, there's a good excuse for me not to leave the house, um, it'll be good. Alright, we'll see you in the next video, um, not much else to say, so we'll see you then.